Hello guys, this is Svetlana from Kamui Cosplay and today I show you how I built the super cute Nergigante decimation claws from Monster Hunter World. They may not look like it, but they are made out of super cheap EVA foam and weight almost nothing. Whee! Foam is not only great for making armor, but also for props. I'm so pretty. I mean, wearing a huge massive armor, which completely limits your movement, is already pretty nice. But if you have like these gigantic massive claws on your hand, you cannot even touch anything anymore. Oh, this is so much better. So thirsty. If you want to get into making impractical things and into cosplay in general, check out my cosplay for beginners guide on kamikosplay.com. Yay! And now let's start. The decimation claws are my favorite weapon design in Monster Underworld. They look absolutely insane and I love fighting with them. To get the correct size, Benny drew me two blueprints. I wanted to take it slow, so I began with the smaller paw. First, I cut the claws away to get a base for my hand. Then I grabbed some 10mm EVA foam and traced my pattern onto it a few times. I cut all pieces out and stacked them over each other with a PVC pipe in the middle. As you can see, I left some space for my hand. After gluing all layers together with contact cement, I got the spooky thing at the end. Nice! Next, I drew on some marks for orientation and began carving it into shape with a box cutter. Then, to clean up the surface, I used my Dremel. Now onto the claw fingers. I traced the pattern to 10mm foam and cut them out several times. To give them more stability, I also glued in a heat-shaped PVC pipe. Hot glue was enough for this. Then I attached the remaining layers and used my box cutter to bring them into shape. Carving them already took quite a while, but sanding them with my Dremel was even worse. I had to wear my respiratory mask and eye protection for several hours. The result, however, was nice and smooth. Next, I dremeled holes into the base and carefully glued each claw on. So far, so good. Hey, it already works great as a corgi scratcher. To close the gaps, I grabbed some foam clay. A little bit of water helped wonders to smear it on smoothly. Following that, I dremeled some more texture onto the claws began covering the whole paw with scraps of 2mm EVA foam. This also took quite a while. After that, I took my wood burning tool and burned dragon scales into the material. For the weird element on the back, I cut out more 10mm foam, glued it together, sanded it into shape, covered it with more foam and burned in the texture. Afterwards, I just glued it onto the back. Easy peasy. I also added a further piece at the bottom and made three additional horn thingies that I curved, sanded and glued on. So my first Nergigante baby paw was done. It looks super cute, right? Now to the big one. As you can guess, this one took a little bit more effort. At the beginning, the work steps were pretty similar, however. I cut out the base, traced it to foam and layered it together around another PVC pipe. Then I carved and sanded it and glued a huge round bracer to the back. Next, I made some patterns for the long claws and traced them to foam as well. For those, I just used the same procedure as last time. Easy! Gluing, carving and sanding them all took half an eternity though. This time I added the texture first and only then connected them with the base paw. Filling the gaps here required a ton of hot glue. Following this I added two additional layers to the bracer. 
Next, I built a decent amount of horns out of 5mm EVA foam. You can see how I made them in detail in my last two Ner Gigante videos. I added a few additional layers to some horns, so they would look more natural and grown out. Then I just glued all onto the bracer. The larger ones turned out quite massive, but the smaller ones were just made out of foam clay. After attaching them all, the claw already looked pretty spiky. Following this, I used more foam clay and spread it all around the spikes. This helped them to look more like they were bursting through the skin from the inside. Adding water over the foam actually helped the clay to stick better to the surface below. Well, and next I had to add some more skin on top. A lot of skin, seriously, this took forever. Burning in the texture also took me around half a day. The result, however, was well worth the effort. For the barbed wire, I cut out stripes out of 2mm foam. I simply braided them and added a few knots here and there. The result, I think, looked real enough. Now I only had to wrap it around the whole paw. Oh, and I also added these extra foam pieces at the end, so the skin looked more raised around the fingers. Well, so far for the build. As you can see, they turned out quite massive. Great for petting corgis and scratching your back. Next followed the priming. First the claws got covered in 4 layers of flex bond. This made the dusty and rough surface nice and smooth. For the rest I heated up some Plasti Dip in hot tap water and applied 3 thick coats all over the little paw. I repeated the same with the large paw. Even though, as you can see, it didn't fit at all into my spray booth anymore. After this I grabbed our airbrush and started painting the horns. Then Benny added shadows and gave the skin a brownish coat. The fingertips also got some cute highlights and I applied some yellow to the back. So far so good. Ready for the next step. I applied a thick coat of protective spray varnish all around. This was the preparation for the upcoming oil wash. Next I added brown oil paint all over the build and wiped it off again afterwards. The coat of spray varnish protects the paint underneath. Yay! This is a super fast and effective technique to give your pieces a natural look. Next Benny added more shadows to every single scale and pimped the yellow areas. Finally I glued on the horns, which I separated before and also painted and attached the foam bar prior. Last but not least, I applied another thick coat of spray varnish and the Nerd Gigante Dual Blades, the decimation claws, were done. In total, Benny and I worked the whole week on these cute babies. I love how they turned out. So cute, so fluffy, so spiky. These weapons were the final parts of my Nerd Gigante armor cosplay. After 3 months of work, I couldn't believe it was finally done! So now that the Nerd Gigante armor is finally complete, I don't have to make any more spikes. I counted them and in total this costume has 825 spikes, which were all hand sculpted and bended and shaped and primed and painted and airbrushed and <sighs> sealed and cut and glued on and I'm done. Anyway, I'm now the proud owner of two super useful Nergigante decimation cloths, which are really helpful for everyday household tasks. In the next video, I show you how I put the whole costume on and how all the attachment works. I really hope you liked this video and if you still have any questions, just leave me a comment below 
And as always, liking and subscribing is very much appreciated. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.